Hi folks, and thanks for joining us today in a conversation around your data matters and so does the architecture of your storage network. I'm lucky today to have Paul Romero, the Senior Director of Software Integrated Solutions at Hitachi Ventara along. Paul, thanks for joining. Hey Jay, thanks for having me here. Pleasure to be here. So I wanted to have a conversation, Paul, a little bit, or at least start this conversation of ours a little bit around the, con the conversation of the last several years, people seem to have a little trouble remembering why enterprise storage environments and and really seriously architected storage area networking environments uh, exist. You know, the, the little bit of uh, forgetfulness, maybe a little bit of the situation of you guys have made it so simple to look after these things that people forget all of the technology that's uh, that's built inside of them. But, you know, I think for a lot of the mission critical, business critical uh, application base, right, I think you would agree, we we see people needing that that level of, of storage technology. Absolutely, AJ, and, and I think it's important to understand the history behind it, right? We've been uh, doing uh, storage area networks uh, for the past 20 plus years, and it's a it's not the same to use a software or hardware product that is on version one as opposed to one that has been around for decades, where multiple customers have uh, tested the products, where we've gone through multiple iterations of new features and functions, where we have multiple um, uh, sets of uh, firmware versions developed with customers in mind and their feedback and new technologies also. Yeah, I agree. It's it's interesting to me, you know, that the folks that aren't familiar with Fiber Channel, right? And as you point out, you know, our relationship with 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 you folks has has been going on for more than twenty years, and that development, right, has led to some significant advantages. Um, for us overall in the in the technology, and it's always kind of funny to me when somebody comes along and says, "Oh, hey, you know, we we came up with this new this new thing, you know, that that that's going to make you know, for example, IP storage, you know, better, and and you know, so things like people completely forgetting that Fiber Channel has been doing zero copy for longer than RDMA has existed um, as a you know as a as a protocol kind of conversation, and it's like. For the folks that don't know fiber channel storage area networks, they're not aware that 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 long range of development is what provides that that gold standard, I'll say, of, of fiber channel storage area networks. Absolutely. Uh, I think that sometimes we take things for granted, right? But I, I bet you wouldn't be happy if you go to an ATM and try to get your money out, but you can because the system's out, right? I don't think yeah. that'd be a good thing. So we I've been with the company for 22 years. Um, our experience working with Broadcom, with Brocade, has been extremely positive. Um, I'm part of an organization that handles all the interoperability and certification of our storage products with fiber channel switches, Brocade being one of our key players, key uh, uh, partners that we do business with. And it's been a great experience to see the level of cooperations that we have across the board to make sure that our customers are getting a product that has been tested fully from beginning to end, from host to storage to disk, everything has been tested on multiple layers, not just in our um, uh, engineering groups within um, Hitachi, but also within the company itself that interacts with vendors like Brocade. Yeah, I think uh, to use another example um, past past the ATM, uh, healthcare would be an, an, another example for me. Everything is in uh, electronics now, whether it's the imaging or the software programs that when the doctor prescribes a medication for you, automatically check against your medical record and any medications that you're already taking or your health history to make sure that it's that it's okay to do. And those systems can't go away, right? And sim similarly to the financial systems, you know, you can imagine um, if if all of a sudden the stock exchanges stopped operating, right? Or as you point out, you know, we're so dependent on, you know, whether it's Apple Pay or Google Pay or, you know, take Venmo, take, take your pick, those backend systems are still us, right? Those backend systems are still, you know, very critical, very highly performance storage area networks. And I think that the, you know, as we've talked before, there's that set of considerations that I think uh, people need to be aware of. And to your point, reliability is 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 one of the most one of the most critical around that product set. Absolutely, I think that reliability, performance, availability of systems are critical for uh, many industries nowadays. Um, a ransomware attack that uh, uh, prevents people from getting to their 
uh, financial records or their healthcare providers, it's, it's a big problem. So you need a solution. You need an infrastructure behind that can sustain multiple failures, that is easy to upgrade, that doesn't go down when you're upgrading to the latest firmware. Uh, we have that with fiber channel sign attached storage. Our VSP systems are fully redundant. Um, and there is a video we recently created with um, which shows live how the system continues to run even after you pull out 27 components of it. So these type of things are very important and some people may not realize how critical they are because a small glitch on a system could cause major down, uh, downtime on, on very important critical systems nowadays. Yeah, to, to that point, one of the one of our shared customers here in the Bay Area that that handles, you know, a, a crazy number of transactions per section on their on their site, um, had us working together to to solve the, a multipath I/O software uh, software issue. So this concept of sick but not dead links. So to your point, you know, a single component could cause um, you know a cascade effect, right? In in software applications, you know, the the they have occasionally tendencies when when the infrastructure underneath them slows down or something, right? The application may behave in a very, very bad fashion, right? And so, you know, those are those are things where we're all dependent on that that infrastructure. We're all, de we're all dependent on the Internet of Things every day, right? We we live with it. And I think people tend to forget that those those back end mission critical business critical systems need that infrastructure underneath it. They need they need the ability to be able to do that. Absolutely. You need to have that confidence in the solution you have behind in, in two two aspects that I consider to be critical. One, the technology itself. Right. And we've proven for many years since the mainframe days when we build the systems with mainframe in mind as one of the top uh, uh, technologies for having storage available. Uh, uh, performing optimal levels and reliable, but also the relationship. I want to go back to that because it's critical. Um, you want to make sure that the entire data path is covered when it comes to uh, having your data available. And that relationship we have for 20 plus years is critical to show that we work together and we work together well. Absolutely. And I think, you know, it's it that that helps us as well when we're talking about being able to do so, for instance, performance at scale in, in, in these environments, right? We test out and and you know continue to support customers that that build you know systems that really uh, occasionally stress our environments you know sometimes a little a little more than than they originally uh, planned right and and they they have to have that that confidence in the in the flexibility and the ability of of, of our systems to be both easy to easy to manage and look after but also provide you the visibility to know what's what's going on right those ransomware attacks are not going to go away you know the security issues are not going to go away and the ability to recover that data and recover it in a very timely fashion for for again those mission critical business critical uh, environments it becomes you know something that you just can't do without absolutely and i think look when you're looking at these type of problems these are big problems okay you you need to have the means to scale right having systems that have just a uh, 100 terabytes of capacity nowadays is not it's common, right? You're talking about petabytes. And how do you make sure that a company that deals with that level of scalability has the certainty that the vendor they're dealing with has tested this, has, has actually done that level of testing? It's not simple because you're talking about frames of, 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 of systems that are sitting there for, for test and validation. And yes, we do that. We test with uh, the largest configurations that you have. We test with the multi-site configurations for three data centers. And yes, we do test with uh, many different iterations of complex environments with snapshots, with immutable copies. So all that is tested in-house before a customer ever sees it. Yeah, agreed. And I think one of the things to, to remember that, that you know you pointed out to me before um, mm -hmm. is is there's the the underlying infrastructure of it, right? But then there's what happens when you have to recover, right? And so you know if you if you start thinking about not having local copies, you know, and and mirrored within the data center and so on, go ahead. Tell me tell me how long it takes you to recover four or five petabytes of data from the cloud. To your application base, you know, in in internally, right? Or or you know, how do you have the, the visibility to it, right? So I, I, you know, those are those are things that people need to think through when you're talking about these kinds of mission critical environments. Certainly, and, and that's a different type of conversation. In the past, you used to hear people talking about what is my backup window? Is your solution going to help me meet that? Nowadays, with ransomware type of attacks, you, you're looking at the restore. 
right? How soon can I restore this data, right? Uh, and that is, is paramount for us. We want to have the immutability needed. We want to have the speed needed to recover. And we have that within our systems. Absolutely. So I think the last thing I wanted to just sort of touch on with you today, Paul, is, is you know, an upcoming technology. Or it's a technology we've been talking about for several years of non-volatile memory express. And I know you guys already have NVMe devices in the back end of your arrays and you already, you know, you do have support for NVMe uh, over fabrics. But I, I want to make the point that there's a lot of software development still to come with um, with NVMe. Right. And that. Um, that's going to come in software for platforms people are already purchasing, right? And so to me, that makes it very critical to make sure that you buy the right infrastructure today, right? That's going to be able to, to deal with that technology and the performance of that technology as, as it comes in. So AJ, yes, you, you're absolutely right. Uh, with new developments, new technologies, in the case of NVMe, um, it was required because instead of having spindles, we had flash storage. So uh, SCAS is no longer the most optimal protocol you can use with, with, with flash storage, right? So how do we cope with that? We have backend storage that supports NVMe. We have front end ports that support NVMe. Um, so it's a matter of the application being NVMe friendly. Does it support the NVMe protocol in a way that it, the application takes advantage of uh, this newest development? We're ready, we got you back. All you have to do is just start using it when your application is ready. Excellent. And so um, thank you for that, Paul. And thank you again for the um, for, for joining me today in this conversation around, um, you know, helping people remember why the architecture of their storage network matters for those business critical and mission critical environments. Pleasure being here. Thank you very much, AJ.